Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the new Mac Pro. I've been looking forward to this for quite some time. In fact, I used to have the trash can Mac Pro, and that was one of the worst Apple computers I've actually owned. So I've been using an iMac Pro in the meantime, but I've really wanted a modular Mac Pro. So let's go ahead and unbox this, then we'll do an overview of the actual Mac Pro itself, and then maybe run a couple benchmarks based on the same videos I exported and things with the MacBook Pro review not too long ago. So this box is about 80 pounds or so, according to the UPS label. It's got Velcro straps on the side to help you undo it. So you pull these and then it just comes out like that. And then the same thing on the other side. And I'll talk about the specifications and things in just a moment. And then this just pulls off in half. So it comes off like this. And this is a really hefty box. If you look inside here, it's really well protected and very, very nice. So let me set that down. And here's the Mac Pro itself. Now inside are a bunch of accessories. So let's take a look at that quick. So this looks like it's the mouse and cable. And I didn't order the trackpad. I didn't know it was a different color. So I already had a space gray one. And let's see what we've got here. So we have a braided cable and it's a braided lightning to USB-C cable. So that's pretty nice. And then we also have a magic mouse and it's silver on the bottom and then black on the top. And this is a little bit different than the one you get with the iMac Pro. The iMac Pro has space gray on the bottom instead of silver. So I'll set this aside. And then here we have the keyboard. So I think it's a full size keyboard. It is, and this is silver with black keys. So instead of space gray, it matches the case of the Mac Pro. And then I think that's it as far as what's in here. So let me put this away. Now here's the Mac Pro itself. This is incredibly heavy, so let me see if I can lift it this way. Now inside we have a little pamphlet. Now it actually had a pull tab on it that ripped off when I tried to pull this out. So let's see what we've got here. We have a Mac Pro manual. Looks like welcome to Mac Pro. It's in color and everything. So it's really nice. I'll look over this maybe a little bit later. We have some instructions about the box for some reason. I don't know if this is for, oh, this is for recycling your box. And then I thought there were Apple stickers. There are, but they're stuck in here. And here are the Apple stickers. They're pretty large. And then down here, we have our power cable. And this is a braided power cable. So it's unlike some others, it's very thick too. So you can see that it's braided, it's very nice. So I'll set this aside and let's take a look at the Mac Pro itself. So here is the Mac Pro. It's about the same size as the previous Mac Pro, the larger cheese grater one. Let's go ahead and take this cover off it. And it's got this nice wrapping on it, let's see here. Oh, there's another piece here on the bottom. So this is the Mac Pro, and to give you a size comparison, it's about the same size as the previous cheese grater Mac, or here's an iPhone 11 Pro Max. So it's a huge machine for a Mac, but that's good because I can fully configure it. Now, if you take a look on the top, you see we've got some plastic lines around where the handles are. I haven't really heard anyone else mention this, but this is where the antennas are for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and things like that. When you have an aluminum enclosure, you need to have some place to actually have the antennas outside, so they put those right here. Now on top, you've got a power button, you've got a status light here, and then you've got two Thunderbolt 3 ports. And then you have the handle to take the top off. This is one piece of aluminum. These sides look like they were screwed on afterward, but you just lift it and then you turn it like this and then pull straight up. And it's pretty heavy. Now on the back here, you'll see the RAM modules. So the RAM goes underneath these covers. Oops. 
And then on the other side, this is where we have everything that's configured. So in this one, this is the heat sink. There's no afterburner card, but there are two Radeon Pro Vega 2 MPX modules, so dual graphics cards. And this is kind of interesting because this is not the configuration that I actually ordered. In fact, I ordered a 12 core with 32 gigs of RAM, one MPX module that was a Radeon Pro Vega 2, an afterburner card, and two terabyte SSD. What Apple actually sent is much better than that. So this is a 16 core CPU. It's got two Radeon Pro Vega 2 modules, and then it has 96 gigabytes of RAM and four terabytes of storage. So this is about a three or $4,000 more expensive configuration than the one I actually ordered. And so I thought the only right thing to do was give Apple a call and let them know they actually sent me a more expensive one. And so I did that and they gave me two options. They said they'd send me a return label to return this and get the configuration I ordered. Or if I was happy with this, I could just keep it at their loss. So obviously I decided to keep it and I was pretty stunned that it was that simple, but they said, go ahead and keep it, have a nice day, happy holidays, and that was it. So I'll keep the better configuration. The serial numbers match what I actually have registered to me. So. I'm not sure what happened there, but I guess it worked out and I paid for a lesser configuration. So that's really nice. Now, one of the things that's neat is the four terabyte SSD is underneath this piece here. It's not user serviceable because it's bound to the Apple's T2 security chip. So you can't really change those, but you can upgrade the storage yourself by adding different SSDs or hard drives to the Mac Pro. Now on the top, you'll see this is one piece of aluminum, and this is actually the locking mechanism where it locks with the top. You've got your Thunderbolt ports here, and there's your power button. So this is a really nice machined aluminum, very simple, but very elegant also. The feet are removable, but I'm not going to use the wheels. And then on the back, we have a ton of ports. So on the back, the top, every Mac Pro gets these two USB-A and two Thunderbolt 3. So you've got two on the top, two on the back. And then you get four more Thunderbolt 3 ports for every MPX module you have. So four Thunderbolt 3 and an HDMI, then four more Thunderbolt 3 HDMI. And then you've got dual gigabit or 10 gigabit Ethernet and your power adapter at the bottom. So it's really nice, very well built. And then you have your fans on the front and the fans obviously cool the whole thing. And supposedly it's pretty quiet. It doesn't have a fan or water cooling over the heat sink of the CPU. So hopefully it keeps it nice and cool while it's actually blowing air through. And supposedly it's silent when even doing intensive tasks. Now, before I put this top on, one thing you may not have seen is inside this. So it's got gaskets to seal and everything else. It's really nice, well-made, very nicely machined. So let me go ahead and put it on top of this and latch it on. Then we just turn it and that's it. It's latched down. Now I decided not to go with the Pro Display XDR. Maybe I'll get one in the future, but I have a 5K by 2K LG ultrawide, which is more than enough for doing 4K videos on YouTube. And in the future, maybe when I bump that resolution up to 6K, I could get an 8K Dell monitor, but at this point, 4K is enough for me. And most people are watching 1080p on their phones anyway. So this should help me compress footage very quickly. Now I set up the Mac Pro, installed all of my software, had to do a software update that took about 20 minutes. And then I decided to run a bunch of benchmarks after everything has settled down. Now, the first thing I did was run a disk speed test and that was pretty fast. Just like all of the modern Macs, it came in at 2,816 for write speed, 2,694 for read speed. And that's basically what you would expect with any current Mac with their latest SSDs in them. It will go a little bit faster and then a little bit slower, but that's pretty average for what we would expect. Then I ran Geekbench. I used Geekbench 5 to see what these scores would be. And keep in mind, Geekbench 5 is a little bit lower than what Geekbench 4 would show us. Now, also keep in mind that this is using Xeon processors that are very similar in speed to what's in an iMac Pro. So for some of these scores, they'll 
be pretty similar, but with all the extra hardware in here, that's where the difference in speed comes. Now, for Geekbench, single core came in at 1,009, where multi core came in at 14,269 for multi core. To give you a little bit of a comparison, the latest 2019 MacBook Pro comes in around 6,000 or so, so it's pretty fast. Now, the next thing I did was run Metal, and Metal let me select just one GPU. And with one GPU, I scored 8,000 or 87,548. And again, you can do that on two separate GPUs, so that's pretty fast. And then also, I ran another test using OpenCL. They're basically the same score. And then I ran Cinebench, and unfortunately Cinebench only lets us measure the CPU now, not the GPU, but it was pretty fast, 6,519. And then finally I exported 4K video. Now the final test I did was with Final Cut Pro. I exported a 4K 60p video, in fact it's the exact same video file that I exported with the 2019 MacBook Pro and the iMac Pro in the previous video. So it's about 10 minutes and 22 seconds long, and it's a 4K 60p video, so it's much slower to export than 4K 30 or 4K 24, so just keep that in mind. And what I did is delete all the render files, and that's unfortunate for this device because normally that's where it excels. When you have all of the editing done, usually your rendering is done because these machines are so fast and rendering in the background. But for comparison with the iMac Pro, the iMac Pro exported this in 13 minutes and 15 seconds. The MacBook Pro exported it in 11 minutes and 45 seconds, whereas this Mac Pro exported it in 9 minutes and 38 seconds. Now, I haven't seen the footage that I've been recording in lately export under the amount of time that the video is in a very long time. So if a video is 10 minutes long, this is actually faster than 10 minutes. So that's really good for the type of video editing I do and how I actually do everything. So I'm pretty impressed with that. And as I use different types of footage with it, like C200 raw footage, this will help tremendously. But I'd love to hear what you have to say about this in the comments below. I know the Mac Pro is super expensive, but it's meant to be a workstation PC that you use all the time. And you can do whatever you want with it, configure it however you want, and upgrade it over time. So I plan to use this probably over the next five years or so as I upgrade it as needed. I can upgrade the CPU if needed, upgrade the graphics cards as needed, but let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.